Hello everyone, welcome back to my weekend updates. I know that I said I planned this month to be about trees, but when I started getting more focused on the rewrite, which as I said I'm doing because it will help immensely with the implementation of the octree data structure, I may have gotten a little distracted and started creating a nicer player movement and camera system. So here I have the player walking in first person. Pressing shift makes me sprint. And you can see that the box there, which represents the player's velocity, is smoothly speeding up and slowing down. I can also press a key and switch into third person view, where there's no view bobbing, but I can orbit around and see from a separate perspective the player's movement. On top of this, I also began working on a collision detection system, in which I actually use the exact same ray trace function as the renderer, to continuously detect collision intersection and correction. It's currently a little buggy, and most of that is due to the current collision ray being just that, a single ray originating from a single point. There should instead be multiple rays fired from the player's bounding box to get a more accurate representation of the collision. And in a voxel world, this only needs to be as detailed as the number of voxels the player collision box's surface takes up. Here you can see this physics in action. As I said, it just uses the ray tracer, so it can collide with the voxels, it can collide with this debug plane below, the box over here, or even the sphere. Though it's a little jank for the exact reasons I said before. Another silly bug that's due to the system being a part of the ray tracer is that you collide with everything that's visible. Here's an example of that. As I walk off the edge of the plane, I begin speeding up downwards, <clears throat> which means the velocity debug block starts to move down relative to the player. This happens until it gets right underneath the player, in which case the player detects it as a surface that it should be standing on, zeroing the vertical velocity. This means that the velocity box is now up back where it started, which means that the cycle will repeat. The solution for this is super simple. I just need to have two separate arrays of objects, one with collidable objects and one with non-collidable objects. Now that I'm closer to the end of the video, I want to chat about something a little more serious. While I love working on this project and putting content out, I have to balance my life. I sort of want to make more meaningful content in a longer form, but it's not really feasible with my current schedule. I have a full-time software job on weekdays and then come home to spend anywhere from four to eight hours writing code for this project daily. I also then work on it on weekends, as well as plan a video, write a script, record the audio and video clips, then edit it down. This process also takes anywhere from four to eight hours. The quickest video I ever made was week five, which I did in about two hours because I wanted to do something else that Sunday. So given this information, I wanted to ask all of you who watch what you would like to see from me. I can continue to put out short little updates like this weekly, or I can spend more time and make longer form videos where I explain more about the development process, such as bugs I run into, how I solve them, mathematical concepts, etc which might be a monthly or even longer schedule. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think. Anyways, thank you all for watching.